As you might be able to tell, I tend to prefer espresso over other brew methods such as pour over. And this is honestly probably a good thing because it's likely saved you guys an endless array of new dripper videos. So if a pour over system is going to catch my attention, it needs to both offer something innovative and if I'm perfectly honest, it needs to look good. This system right here has won a Red Dot Design Award and was also used to win the 2018 Brewers Cup Championship. So, when Goat Story reached out offering to send me one of their Gina Smart Brewers, I figured it checked enough boxes to take it for a spin. Now this system did take me a while to fully wrap my head around it, but I think I've done exactly that and I'm ready to share some thoughts with you guys. As always, if you want to check out this system, I'll have it linked down in the description below. The Gina plays on the ever-growing trend of smart and all-in-one systems, combining a ceramic V60 dripper, a pretty slick variable valve, which we'll get into later, a stainless steel stand, and a built-in Bluetooth smart scale. But only if you want the scale built-in. They also offer a basic version of the system that's about 100 bucks cheaper, and I think that's honestly a good place to start this review. If you do away with the smart scale, what you're getting is a nicely designed sturdy pour over stand, a matching carafe with an insert for cold drip, a ceramic V60 cone with a lid, and the headline feature, a variable rate valve. Now I don't normally talk about price too much in these videos, however for this one I feel like it's kind of important because it really is just a collection of different parts that you could go out and buy individually. The base Gina is listed for around $150, whereas the smart version is around $250. If we were to use the same ceramic dripper and valve, that's going to run you about $65. A nice carafe, $20 to $30. A pour over stand, another $50 to $100. And a smart scale, another $90 on the cheaper end of things. Total that all up, and the asking price for the Gina is actually pretty reasonable, not even taking into consideration how nice it looks as an overall package. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about what the Gina has actually been like to use. Upon unboxing, I was pleasantly surprised by the overall build quality, particularly with the cone and valve assembly itself. It feels really high quality, and if you're searching for a nice looking V60 cone to use on any setup, such as the new Time War, this is a genuinely good option. The stand and base are also nice, however I did notice it tended to get a little bit wobbly when placed on a separate scale. Overall, I was very pleased with the fit and finish, as well as how the sleek looks matched my modern black brew bar. Using the valve, you can effectively use this system in three ways. As an immersion brewer, as a regular V60, or as a cold dripper. When used with the valve wide open, the maximum flow rate is around 14 grams per second, which is more than fast enough. But it can also be changed to suit any desired flow rate all the way down to just a few drips per minute. What this means is that you can effectively decouple the flow rate from grind size by setting a maximum drawdown speed. This opens up a world of possibilities that was actually demonstrated by Emi Fukuhori in the 2018 Brewers Cup. Her winning recipe involved pouring 50 grams of water at 80 degrees Celsius and steeping for 45 seconds to gently extract sweetness, then opening the valve and pouring 100 grams of water at 95 degrees to bring out more complex acidity, then closing the valve again and pouring 70 grams of water at 80 degrees Celsius, and finally opening the valve to release. And although going to those lengths might seem like complete overkill for most people, the flexibility is really interesting. The way that I personally ended up using the Gina in most cases was as an immersion brewer. The thick ceramic walls, combined with the included lid, allowed for relatively good temperature retention. It will likely be pointed out that the same brewing technique could be accomplished using something like a Clever Dripper or Hario Switch, and it's true. But again, this system builds on top of those by offering greater flexibility due to the variable flow rates, greater build quality, and better overall aesthetics. On that note, it's probably time to talk about my least favorite part of most smart systems, the app. You've probably noticed that I haven't been talking about the scale very much, and that is because all of the functionality is controlled through the Gina app. In its most basic brew bar mode, the app allows you to calculate brew ratios at a glance, as well as connect up to three brewers at a time and see live brewing information. 
This is the mode I used 95% of the time, and really it should be treated like the display that I think many people wish was just physically somewhere on the brewer itself. The other built-in modes will provide a more guided experience through pour over, immersion, or cold drip workflows, which can be helpful for beginners or those wanting to try out unfamiliar brew styles such as cold drip. But I didn't feel as though these other modes provided much value apart from that. Speaking of cold drip, I am personally not a huge fan of it in general, but the system did work perfectly fine in this configuration, and even looks pretty cool as a desk ornament while doing so. However, the app side of the cold drip setup could use some work. It tells you to dial in the extremely slow flow rate by tapping each time a drip exits the spout, which feels a little bit clumsy. But even more frustrating is that if you close the app, you will lose all of the information about your ongoing brew, which for a method that generally takes one to two hours is a pretty big user experience oversight. Putting the dedicated brew modes aside and focusing just on this system in its most basic form, this is an enjoyable tool to use every day, assuming you're okay with pulling out your phone. And although I am someone who really doesn't like that idea, and ended up just using this on top of my time war for the first little bit. Because of that, once I sucked up my pride and put the app on the home screen, it really was a pretty slick user experience. Weigh your beans, time and weigh your brew, adjust the flow rate at will, all in one sleek and premium feeling package. Still, I would have preferred if there was some sort of cleverly hidden display for the scale and timer on the front. For me, that really would have pushed the Gina from an 8 to a 10. Of course, if the scale and app interface really bothers you that much, you could opt for the basic version. As we saw, it's still reasonably priced for the look and build quality you're getting, and you still get to take advantage of the endless possibilities of the variable rate valve. If you're looking to add some style to your current pour over workflow, or you simply want to increase the number of brew methods you have on hand, the Gina by Goat Story is an attractive all-in-one system with build quality to match. Again, if you want to check out the Gina, I will have it linked down in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave it a like, and even consider subscribing if you want to see some more like it in the future. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.